But Superman Secret Revealed, we're talking Superman issues 17 and the upcoming 18, and it starts right now. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. So recently, Superman issue number 17 just came out this past week in the local comic book stores, but it's starting to see some buzz around it saying his identity is being revealed. What do you think about this, Jack? Well, Brian, I think this is like a monumental moment in kind of comics history. This wasn't a book that was talked about before New Comic Book Day last week, right? We didn't see this getting buzzed for the Bolo list. I didn't see a lot of people posting about this book. Um, but, you know, right on the cover of the book, it said uh, the word truth. They were talking about some big truth that Superman was going to be talking about. You and I got a chance to read this issue by now, and... The entire issue is about kind of Superman's debate with that truth. Now, they don't come out and say it, right? They don't come out and say that he's talking about revealing his secret. But he's having this discussion with his wife about the things going on in his life as kind of Clark Kent and kind of his responsibilities as Superman. And we've heard people say things like, well, you know, nothing really happens in this issue. But I think a lot happens um, because part of his life, right, it is Clark Kent. He may have been wearing the Superman outfit. But having that conversation with his wife, Brian, you're married. I'm sure you've had a lot of those kinds of uh, deep back and forths where, uh, you know, there's a little give and a little take. And I like the fact that Lois in this issue kind of stands up to him and says, you know what? You've got enough on your shoulders. Uh, there's talk about a box and Superman can't see into the box. So what's in that box? And Lois is like, you've got enough on your shoulders. This is mine to take on. And throughout this issue, Superman is kind of dealing with the fact that, again, Jonathan Kent, in the story, he's he's gone a thousand years in the future, so he's lost his son. His father's gone to the past. He's now, you know, he's on his own. He's had to deal with this, and he says, like, he's dealing with it, but Lois says, you know, she's not. She's having a hard time with this. And yeah, She was like asking, that. like, what's in it? Is it a weapon for me to kill you with? Or did she what, doesn't know what's in the box, and, yeah, there's a lot of guilt there. And it's funny how you mentioned they, they had a discussion. I think we both viewed it as... Um, a married debate to say it delicately yes yeah yeah you know it, it may borderline an argument but you know it's 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 definitely not there's no contention there i think that it's more of a um it's come from a place of love yeah um so then we see superman throughout later on in the issue so we see him communicating with zod who who is now an ally uh and even supergirl she doesn't fully trust zod she even makes the comment um you know I appreciate that you're trying to reform, but at the same point, I also know that you've been trying to kill us for a number of years. And Zod's actually pretty understanding of this. And then he, as he go, walks away or flies away, He's the, it, yeah, <laughs> it sets on a conversation between Kara Danvers and Superman. And this is why we say like nothing concrete is said that this is what's going to happen. We're just going to add in the context clues that lead us to believe that this is all about Superman revealing his identity because you have those conversations with Lois and Superman or Clark or whoever you want to view him as at that moment. And I got to say, Brian, that's what I love about it. That was a very Clark and Lois conversation, but the fact that he was in his Superman outfit is what makes it almost confusing to us as the reader. And I imagine it has to be confusing to him as a person is what role am I playing in that moment? I like this issue because, he, like you just mentioned, he's in the Superman costume, but it makes that character very human, makes it to where you can identify with him more. You're seeing him go through the same thought processes, the same anxiety, the same guilt, the stuff that... So it humanizes Superman. We're used to Clark Kent being the human and Superman being invincible, but here right. we get that different characteristic where Superman's now having these same. That's what I like about it. And then I like we talked about the debate with the wife, but then I liked how his cousin, old Supergirl's, giving him some some rising too. Like, what's wrong? Is Lois pregnant? Oh God, tell me that's not true. Like, right? You know, getting little getting little jabs in at him. And he says he says to her, he says, "I'm gonna need you for something." And she immediately has his back. Don't worry about it. I got it. And then as she kind of 
figures out, like, wait a minute, he's really uneasy about this. That's when she's like, no, no, wait a minute, you need to tell me what this is about. Um, and he says it's about the truth, and she makes another jab at him, like, well, with you, of course it is, right? Because he's the big blue boy scout, um, which is, again, why I like this issue. I'm not a big Superman fan, full disclosure. Uh, I don't often relate to him because he has kind of that big blue boy scout yeah. mentality. I like characters where there's a duality to them. There's a bit of a, um, you know, there's that inner debate that we all have. That's about why people morality. get attracted to, let's say, the Batman or Superman. And people get attracted right. to Batman for the, the darker side. And I think I'm that's why I'm attracted to Green Arrow, uh, pause, because he's kind of in the middle of the both of them, right? Where he's got that good and that bad, and he's got to make that decision. Um, so the great thing about um, this is you see she she has his back, but she wants to know. And he, go, and he says, you know, this is about a truth, but this is going to affect you more than anybody. And I think that's because he's talking about, again, revealing his secret identity, which would then affect her as his cousin. Everybody knows that's his cousin. Um, and I think that there would be a kind of a natural kind of outing of her as well. Now, it's important to note in that last panel, we see there's a young boy who I'm not familiar with who this young boy is. Let us know in the comment section if this is just a character I've missed from earlier. But he is overhearing this entire thing. So it makes me wonder if Superman's not going to be able to deliver this in the way he wants to. Also, we got a chance to see uh, the cover for issue 18, right, Brian? Like that's been put out there. And right above the trade dress, it says secret revealed. And the cover, um, it's, it's it revealed to the world Superman. Um, and the cover, it, it's a minimalistic cover. It's a white cover. But you see Superman looking directly ahead with that suit and the glasses in his hand. And it really implies that he's taking off that mask of Clark Kent and he's going to be himself to the world. Uh, this is a monumental event in comics because Superman is maybe the oldest modern superhero that we have. Throughout this entire history, he has been Clark Kent and Superman. So the idea that Brian Michael Bendis, who we talked about follow the money, right? We said when he comes to DC, they're going to do big things with him because they paid him a fortune. They marketed the heck out of him. Um, and it looks like Brian Michael Bendis is going to take a major step in DC Comics history and reveal the identity of Superman. And this has been um, reported on by Bleeding Cool. They ran an article talking about um, the upcoming issue 18 and the fact that issue 17, the issue that just hit shops that we talked that we were just talking about and going through, is not going to be reprinted by DC Comics, Brian, which is a little odd. Yeah, but to be honest... You see a lot of later printings with Marvel, but you don't see as many later printings recently with DC. You see it here and there, but I, I'm I'm kind of glad DC's not reprinting. I mean, you could pick it up in trade later on. You could pick it up in other forms. You could pick it up digital. You could pick, you know, at some point it might be on the DC Universe app. So it's not like you're not going to be able to get your hands on it as a reader. But right. the fact that they're saying they're not going to reprint it, that I mean, that's, that's definitely a news cycle. Yeah, and so I think that that ended up spiking the secondary market. That had people kind of scrambling to get cover A and especially cover B, that Adam Hughes variant. Um, which, full disclosure, I'm not a fan of that Adam Hughes variant. I I've actually, never been a fan of hardly any of his Superman variants. No, and if you're collecting these issues, Brian, because of the event, right? You and I are big cover B DC guys. I, like the tr I want the trade dress. For my personal collection, I want that 17 Truth. And I want that 18 revealed to the world. I want – those are really – those covers I feel like are doing a better job letting you know what is going on in this issue. This this uh, you know Superman variant, which features Batman, it just – that Adam Hughes did, even if I felt like it was the greatest cover art in the world, it's not the reason that I'm attracted to this issue. I'm attracted to this issue because of the story, what's going on in it. And it's kind of monumental place in DC Comics history. And that's why we're talking about it. That's why we're making this video. That's why Bleeding Cool is reporting on it. Um, but, of course, the Adam Hughes cover is the one that saw the largest secondary market spike. We're seeing these books sell online. Even now, where there's, there's been a drop-off in the last day, which happens, right? Because anytime a book spikes, people run out to their LCSs and buy them. People buy them off places like Midtown, My Comic Shop, TFAW. They get those covers in. And then they start listing them on eBay, and you see the prices drop. So now the, they're still doing very well, though. They're doing about $30 for a set 
of cover A and cover B, um, which is obviously well over the cover price of these issues. MSRP on these, I think, is uh, $3.99. So you're looking at $8 investment into those two ish- covers. I don't expect that to stand because this is a reader bus thing, right? We're talking about this from a reader perspective, and in, especially 17, Brian. This issue is really – we loved it. What would you say? It's really nothing to be – Yeah. If you're spending $30 on this book, you're stupid. It is what it is. I, I can't, can't disagree with you because I loved the issue from a reading perspective, yeah. but I loved it because of the things we talked about, right? The right. humanization of Superman. The humanization of Superman it doesn't make an issue a key issue. I could – Understand the argument for people talking about 18, but I expect 18 to have a larger print run because people knew about this the day before FOC. It, well, people knew about it for about four days before FOC, but it got heavily talked about about a day before FOC. I I really expect retailers to have put in larger orders for 18. I'm sure DC in those private chats, if you're not aware, guys, DC has these like Facebook video chats with retailers. And they will let retailers know you need to order this issue because this is going to happen. This is a first appearance. Um, I imagine that book's going to be ordered heavily. But again, it, we don't really care about this one from a secondary market perspective. We're talking about this because there is no more iconic character than Superman. And this is quite possibly an iconic moment. I will pause, though, and say how many times, Brian, in co- our comics history, have we been led down a path only not to go where they – are making it seem so until Superman really reveals his identity. Yeah, so he's all spend- Tony Stark at the podium with the cheeseburger. Yep, <laughs> yep, and that's and that's why spending thirty dollars is stupid, right? Because you know if he doesn't end up doing that, then you know it's going to end up burning people. It'll probably end up burning people either way. But if you have an opportunity to grab issue seventeen from your LCS at cover price, if you know put in your pre order by all means for issue eighteen, I think it's going to be awesome i think it's gonna be a huge moment in comics history and i think that set 17 and 18 are going to be great and it could could spike readership in the superman series because you and i talked about this before we started recording this neither of us are reading this series yeah i fell off when when bendis took over because i I held a grudge because i liked the run before the the superman launch at rebirth i always say superman and flash were two of my favorite dc titles yeah, me, me too. And I, it was the first time it made me, the first time I ever cared about Superman was the birth of Jonathan Kent. That was the first time I really got invested because it's the first time they began this process of humanizing Superman. I think DC has done a remarkable job and deserves a lot of credit for the, what they've done since Jonathan Kent's birth to really kind of correct maybe a mistake or bridge the gap between those of us who don't really enjoy Superman stories and relate to him. To kind of bring them in. And I, we're going to see apparently on the CW a, a new Lois and Clark show that could feature Jonathan Kent. And I think all of this is going to add to that and make these kind of properties more appealing. So Superman 17 I thought was a great read. I know there's people who are going to sit not going to like it, right? Because he wasn't punching anybody. There wasn't any big fight. But it felt like almost – I hate to say it's almost an indie comic because indie comics tend to be about the heart, about the person, about the story. And that's that's the way I felt reading Superman 17, I enjoyed it. And I'm on board for Superman 18. It's absolutely an issue I will pick up. And it's probably going to be an issue like when it drops, it'll be the first thing I read. Yeah, so if you've read it, let us know what you guys thought about this issue. And will you be picking up number 18 as well? And if you've been reading this title since the Bendis run, let us know your thoughts on that. Because like we said, this headline, although it's like, hey, nothing happened. This headline was kind of clickbaitish. It got me to read the book and I enjoyed this story. And we're going to be back again another video to talk about issue 18 so make sure if you're not that you subscribe hit that bell notification so that way you'll be notified when any of those videos drop on the channel when no pain puff and plain jane let them second guess me when to cop the porch with the porcelain the skin whip the wheels at the horse just... why they trash the chore on my list out of this orbit i saw with the pen i'm eating good miss caloric and shit i sipped the potion and poured it in i own the title she poured it opportunity knock at the door then i grant they rush for the doors and they open like this